In our next problem, we're going to be considering different sets of numbers. Consider the following set of numbers given as negative 9, negative 1 and 3 tenths, 0, 0 0.3, where the 3 repeats, pi over 2, square root of 9, square root of 10. We want to list the numbers in the set that are part of the different sets that are listed. We have natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, and real numbers. So let's start looking through our set of numbers and look for the natural numbers. Now natural numbers are also thought of as counting numbers beginning with 1. So we know that our negative numbers will not be included in that. 0 is not considered a natural number. This point 0.3 where the 3 repeats is not going to be a counting number. Neither is pi over 2. When we get to the square root of 9, we want to notice that the square root of 9 is equivalent to the number 3. 3 is a natural number, so we can list the square root of 9 as one of our natural numbers. The square root of 10 cannot be simplified as we did before with square root of 9, so therefore it will not be a natural number. Now the whole numbers would be the set that would include all of our natural numbers and 0. And we notice that 0 is part of this, so we're going to list 0 and square root of 9 as our whole numbers. The integers would be the whole numbers together with any negative whole numbers. So we know we're going to have the 0 and the square root of 9 as part of this, but we're also going to look to see if either of our negative numbers would be a negative sign in front of a whole number or a natural number, and it is. We have negative 9, so that's going to be one of our integers. Now, a rational number is a number that can be expressed as a fraction or as a terminating or repeating decimal. All of our integer values are rational numbers. We're also going to include, besides our negative 9, our next number in the list is negative 1.3. That's a terminating decimal. That's going to be rational. 0 is going to be there. We have 0 0.3 where the 3 repeats. That's a, term, that's a repeating decimal, so that's rational. Pi over 2, though, is irrational. Square root of 9 is going to be there as it's an integer. But square root of 10 is not. Our irrational numbers, then, will be all of the numbers in this list that we didn't list as rational numbers. So that's going to be pi over 2 and square root of 10. And if we put our rational numbers together with our irrational numbers, we come up with our entire set of real numbers, which would be the entire list once more. So negative 9, negative 1.3, 0, 0 0.3 repeating, pi over 2, square root of 9, and square root of 10. In our next problem, we're going to consider different properties of numbers. Name the property illustrated. Part A. We have 4 times 7 inside parentheses multiplied times 3, and that's equivalent to 4 times the product of 7 and 3. Notice that what's happened here is we've moved the parentheses from the first pair to the last pair, and yet we have an equivalence. This is called the associative property of multiplication. How about part B? We have a set of parentheses in there also. But this time, 3 multiplied times the square root of 5 plus 4 equals 3 multiplied times 4 plus the square root of 5. What's occurred is we've changed the order of addition inside the parentheses. And yet, again, we have an equivalence saying to us that we can change the order of addition and end up with a similar answer, actually the same answer. So we're going to call this the commutative property of addition. Think about commuting, going back and forth. This is just switching the order. Part C, we have 3 multiplied times the square root of 5 plus 4. That's equal to 3 times the square root of 5 plus 12. Where did the 12 come from? 
Well, that was a result of taking the multiplication by 3 and distributing it to each term inside the set of parentheses. This is called the distributive property. And we want to say what we're distributing. It's this distributive property of multiplication over addition. And finally, we have 2 times the square root of 3 plus the square root of 7 equals the square root of 3 plus the square root of 7 times 2. Notice that what's inside the parentheses has remained the same, but we have changed the order in which we're doing the multiplication. When we change the order, this is our commutative property. We have here the commutative property, and what operation were we commuting? And that was multiplication. So this is the commutative property of multiplication. Now we have a couple of questions to consider dealing with the closure property. Part A, are the natural numbers closed with respect to multiplication? For a set to be closed with respect to multiplication would mean that if we take a natural number and we multiply it times another natural number, our result is also going to be a natural number. So this is what would have to occur. Take two natural numbers, multiply them together, and end up with a natural number. And it turns out that if we take any two natural numbers, we'll always end up with a natural number as the result. And for this reason, we would say, yes, the natural numbers will be closed with respect to multiplication. Part B, are the integers closed with respect to division? For this to occur, it would require us to take an integer, divide it by another integer, and we would have to be sure that this is also an integer. Well, let's just take an example. If I take 1 and divide it by 2, am I going to end up with an integer result? No, I end up with 1 half, which is not an integer. And so I can come up with a specific counterexample to show that this is not going to be a closed set. And so the answer to the question is no.